Arizona or USC or UCLA, but this is a Pac-10 team, and it's nice to beat them. Hey, it really is. Or it's play a big them. win. It's, you're right. For a long time, they couldn't even get a, a game with a Pac-10 team. I'm sure a lot of Aztec fans had their doubts about the team's chances after last week's game, but San Diego State beat California today 28-14. to The only disappointment was the size of the crowd, just under 20,000 fans at the stadium. The Aztecs' first possession, they moved 66 yards on 10 plays for the game's first score. On a draw, Chris Hardy gained 16. A couple of plays later, quarterback Mark McKay completes to Casey Brown. That gained 13 yards to the nine. Then on third and goal, McKay completes to Mike Wells. He doesn't hold the ball long, but long enough. Seven nothing state. Cal got things going later in the first quarter. Gil Gilbert hits David Lewis. Nice catch, 17 yards. Four plays later, Gilbert completes to Lance McDougal. 23 yards, nice catch. That made it seven to seven. In the second quarter, the Aztecs then intercepted Gilbert twice before defensive captain Thomas Carter intercepts at the 27, goes all the way, 14 to seven Aztecs. That's how the half ended. Second half, the Aztecs go right to work. First possession, McKay completes to Wells. Three plays later, Casey Brown scores from the four, 21 to seven state. The defense played well all day. They intercepted three passes, recovered a fumble. In the fourth quarter, Darrell Bryan sacked Gilbert here for an eight-yard loss. On the final scoring drive, McKay completes to Jim Sandusky for 26 yards. Sandusky caught four passes today for 102 yards. The touchdown came on a good run by Casey Brown. That made it 28 to seven. Cal scored late in the game, making the final 28 to 14. It changed from the first from the first week to the second week, and it's, it's just a great turnaround. I think we're on an upswing, and uh, I think WAC members are going to have to watch out for us. We had more intensity in our practices, and uh, we were very anxious to make up for what we did last week. We didn't play as well, and for the poor game that we played against Cal last year. There, Tony Gwynn. He has hit safely in 23 straight games. And Gwynn last night made a couple of good catches in right field. He's had some physical problems. Broken arm and it's come along slowly in the last couple of years, but he's going to be a good player. He is the important ingredients on his side. You want to know. Win is only 23. One ball, one strike. They are playing without Terry Kennedy. He jammed a heel, lunging for first base, didn't make the trip. Of course, they're playing without Steve Garvey. Braves have their absentees too, and everyone knows who they are. Well hit, base hit, right center field. Comments will cut it off. That'll be a long single for Tony Gwynn. He's hit safely in 24 straight ball games. Tony Gwynn going for his 26th straight game. So far, 0 for 1 tonight, up for the second time. Kind of exciting when you think of Gwynn heading toward that 30 mark. They mentioned earlier, and this from Mill Chip, our good buddy, there are only about 30 people in the history of the game that have had more than... 30 or more consecutive games that they've hit him. So he's creeping up on a very select group. Well, you remember back several years ago now when Pete Rose had the string going. They were interrupting days programming on television, showing you Pete's single, double, triple home run. It gets exciting. 3-0. and oh. Well, you can't get a base hit if they don't throw it over the plate. So Tony Gwynn has run the count three balls, no strikes. It does when he get up there. You know, when Rose... Uh, Set a new record. Tommy Holmes had the old record of uh, 37 in the National League. In the air, straight away, well hit. Going back as a center fielder, Gladden at the wall, and yeah, right at the wall. He got it. Man, oh man, I'll tell you, I didn't think that ball was hit nearly that far. It almost carried out of the ballpark. So on your Amco scorecard, let's check it again. 
I'm going to go ahead and write SB in my scorebook. Lurch got a pretty good move now. Not to be too hasty here. He's faced a lot of guys with good moves. That's a good point. One ball, no strikes to Tony. Again, his 25 game hitting streak on the line. He's 0 for 3 tonight. He's knocked in a run with a bounce out. Wiggins takes a little bigger lead. I think he's trying to test Lurch and see his best move. That may be it right there. Boy, if you look at Don Gladden, Dave, out in center field, just as Lurch goes to the set, he positions himself. He's really going to give Tony the right center field area. Wiggins goes. Great jump. Brindley throw. Not in time. Wiggins with a 57th steal. Ball hit Allen. Otherwise, I think it would have gone into center field. He could have made third. Counts 2 and 0 to Tony Gwynn. Now you could tell right there, no question where Wiggins was heading for second base. <laughs> Gwynn didn't even try and make a poke at that ball. Well, now he's within four of Gene Richards' marks set back in 1980. Be too surprised if Allen catches Lurch napping, he might try to grab third base here. Don't normally do it with a left-handed batter, but if Wiggins gets the kind of jump he wants to get. Catcher Brindley can stick the ball in his hip pocket. He's gone. No chance for Brindley. Oh, is that a beauty? So Lurch didn't pay any attention. It's 3 0 to Gwynn. Tony's already had the green light once, and Dick Williams has told him as long as this streak's alive, as you look at Wiggins. I mean, he didn't even wait for another pitch, Dave. He just said, hey, I'm going to try it again here. So number 58 for Allen and you can bet green green light time for Tony Gwynn. Infield in and Gwynn takes it outside gets away Wiggins coming and he's safe. The great speed I don't know if Wiggins has ever touched the plate now he does. So the good news is the Padres score a run the bad news is Gwynn may have seen his hitting streak come to an end without even having a chance to swing a bat. So Wiggins though with a great speed gives the Padres a big run. Welcome back to Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati where tonight under chilly chilly weather conditions the Padres prevailed a big win for San Diego 11 to 8 over the Cincinnati Reds and the man standing to violet as I said during the course of the telecast who was on my case in San Francisco but you haven't been on your post game show all year long tonight. He hits the three run shot that breaks the three all deadlock Tony Gwynn. Boy what a poke that was. Yeah it felt nice you know I'd been going all season long without getting a, a home run and you know the, the guys are really getting on me about it so uh, he gave me a fastball down and in and you know, I hit it well and it, and it carried long enough to get out of here. Tony what has it been like for you in 1983 have you felt any of the pressure the 25 game hitting streak the fact of coming back and playing and doing so well has, have you felt pressure at all. Well I think earlier in the, in the year when I was struggling a little bit you know I everything I did just seemed like it was wrong and and uh, you know, I started to doubt myself a little bit and I got benched and, uh, and then I got opportunity to play again and you know I didn't want to let it slip through my fingers again so everything just started going well for me. On Wednesday you hit the long long drive that Don Gladden nailed against the fence and it drifted down into his glove. Did you feel you hit that ball off soda tonight a little better than you hit that one Wednesday. Oh yeah there's no question about tonight. I, I got all of that one. The one I hit in San Francisco was a little bit in on me and I didn't get the, the barrel head of the bat out quick enough and you know it carried a long way but when I hit it you know I thought it was just a fly ball and, and I see him back at the fence so I thought I had a chance and uh, you know after he caught it you know it didn't really dawn on me how close I came to hit my first home run this year but you know tonight was bigger to me because it was a uh, uh, you know the game was tied and uh, you know Soto was was having problems and we didn't want to let him get off the hook and uh, you know he came in with the fastball and I hit it and it went out and you know we didn't hold the lead that long but you know it was a good feeling. It had to be a good feeling and in a moment we're going to come back to Riverfront Stadium and talk more with Tony Gwynn. Don't go away.